Hello. Well, as you doubtless know, I do audio and video transfers. Now, I've had some tapes come in that are mouldy, and usually, in the case of, say, Video 8, have a look at the link here, or Betacam SP, have a look at the link here, the mould will glue the tape together. As it sits on the spools, the mould will cause the tape to snap and get a long tear. It's a very distinctive tear caused by mould gluing the tape together. Occasionally mould can have a bigger problem when it goes across the surface of a tape. If, for example, a tape has been submerged. And I've seen this with VHS and Beta. Have a look at the link here. Uh, where, for example, uh, that, that case was a Betamax tape that had become wet and it had to go through a cleaning process. But uh, that was done on a thing called a tape check machine which are made for VHS and other formats, but they're very expensive and quite rare. And not uh, you can't mix up things. For example, you couldn't use a VHS cleaner to clean an 8mm tape or a, any other uh, non-half-inch tape. So I got these tapes in recently. These have come in via another transfer business. They couldn't handle them. Uh, these are mouldy and they've got mould across the surface. So it's not gluing the tapes together, surprisingly. It's a mould across the surface. And you may be able to see it there. This is the worst tape and this is probably unrecoverable. But some of the other tapes are not quite so bad. And in a moment I'll show you them under the microscope. Now, sometimes they can improve just by playing through a machine. You play them several times, clean the heads of the machine and it'll play. But uh, some of these are really quite stubborn. So in, in, as we were in a case of a last chance saloon sort of thing, there's nothing to lose, the tapes are unrecoverable. I got a section of tape, just a few centimetres, and tried to clean it with isopropyl alcohol, IPA, and just a cotton bud. And actually that did seem to work. It brought the dirt off the tape. But uh, you can't do the whole tape like that, it's just not practical. So we need to find a way to clean the whole length of the tape. Now, if we had a tape check machine for Mini DV, that would be great, but I don't, and I'm not even sure if there are any in the UK at all, and it may not solve the problem. So I'm going to have to try to uh, solve this by hand. Now, actually, at one point we did try sending a tape to my friend Chris Squires. I've done some videos with him before. Have a look at the links. Uh, he does film, and he has film cleaning machines, but they were too brutal for use with uh, Mini DV tape. It was very thin. It just wasn't practical but he's lent me a machine so I could possibly um, modify it or some find some way to get that to help and I also have a rig here that I use a homemade rig which I use for cleaning tape sometimes so perhaps we can uh, find a way of cleaning the tape with isopropyl alcohol uh, let's see if we can lash something up right so first thing I'll show you some of these under the microscope so here's the tape which I think is too far gone. It's completely mottled and it's like this right the way along the tent tape. So I say there's uh, no chance of recovering that one. But uh, let's just see if we can lift some of that off with isopropyl alcohol and a cotton bud to get a feel for whether the process is working. So I'm to rub really quite hard here and I'm supporting the tape with my finger underneath. I'd have to say that the results there have been only marginal. If you look at that section I've cleaned compared to up here where I haven't cleaned, yeah, it's um, better, but it's not better enough that it's going to really make the tape playable. So uh, what different chemicals could I use on this? By the way, you'd never touch this with acetone. That would be cataclysmic. Uh, what could I try on this little section of tape just to get a feel for whether there's any chance of getting this gunge off the tape? Just as an experiment, I'm going to try the most ridiculous thing you'd never use on videotape, which is uh, WD-40. But let's just see if WD-40 lifts the mould off.
No, no it doesn't. And we must make sure we go over that with isopropyl alcohol to remove any traces of the WD-40 which would contaminate the head drum. I think you can see that the concentration of mould on this area here where I've cleaned it is somewhat less than the uh, uncleaned areas such as up here but it's nowhere near being good enough to be playable. In this area here. You know, it's better, but it's still nowhere near good enough. OK, let's uh, look at some of the tapes that may be a little bit more promising than this one. Right, let me show you the problem we're having with these tapes. Here's one that superficially doesn't look too bad. I mean, looking at the tape, that looks clean enough to play but there is still contamination on it. So here we have a mini DV camcorder which is in full working order. Playing a tape there, that's fine. This is just a, a reference tape I've got. Now let's load the um, tape which superficially looks okay. And we're getting nothing. We're getting nothing from that at all, even though it does have a recording on it. And worse still, if we go back to playing our known good tape, it now also won't play anything. Until I put a head cleaner in for a few seconds. And I should say this applies also if these tapes, as these tapes have already been through a baking process, which can be used to stabilize tapes that are doing this. It's called sticky shed syndrome, when they're shedding uh, magnetic material onto the heads. Uh, you can bake tapes for a period of uh, some time, maybe even days, at 50 Celsius in a, an oven, and I've done this many times before. Uh, and that can help a lot, especially with um, oxide formulation tapes, rather more than with metal ones like these. Right, so I've cleaned the heads, and still we're getting nothing from the uh, customer tape. But if I clean the heads once more, and put the uh, known good tape in there, that should be fine then. So it means the tapes are continuously clogging the heads of the player. And you see these offending tapes have already been through a baking process. And uh, it's working fine. So even within just a few seconds of putting that tape in the machine, it will foul the heads. So we need to do something to clean the tape surface and stop it from shedding. Here is a tape that I was able to get some footage from on a previous run. Uh, but you can see how the mould has been picked up by the video head and spread onto the tape in very long lines. Uh, it's caused by the uh, helical scanning of the video heads. So I'm going to try to clean this uh, using isopropyl alcohol and several cotton buds changing them uh, frequently. I think you can see now that there's a short section of this tape, not enough for me uh, to be able to play it, but there's a short section which is uh, clear of the contamination. Uh, at the top of this picture you can see a bit of the tape which hasn't been cleaned, uh, and there are still some small streaks of contamination, but it's 
clearly working in principle. But uh, how could we extend this to clean a whole tape, though? Tape check machines exist uh, for various formats. I believe they do exist for DV, but the cleaning uh, pads on those are, are dry. There's no isopropyl alcohol added, so it's not going to get rid of that um, film of mould that we've seen uh, just by dry cleaning them. It just won't come off. So my good friend Chris Squires of savethosememories.co.uk has lent me this. And it's a cinefilm cleaning machine. And the way it would originally worked, it would have had a roll of a cleaning material uh, which runs, can be pulled through here. And these clamps clamp it on in the way that I've done here. And there was a drip feed for cleaning solution in the top, which is what I'm doing with isopropyl alcohol. So if I cover this in isopropyl alcohol, dismantle the tape, I can possibly have a go at running it through there. Now this tape is not um, ideal for trying this out on because uh, taking this tape apart is hard work. Certain tapes, some TDK ones, where the screws are supposed to be, they're just blanks down the bottom because instead of being a screwed construction, this is glued we should just an add a, a, an added layer of complexity. So we'll look at a tape that we can take apart. Right, this tape has uh, definitely some contamination on it, some um, of the streaking mould we've been looking at. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to take this apart and see if we can clean it in here when it's loaded with isopropyl alcohol. So we can see contamination on it. Actually, there's a lot on this tape, probably more than could possibly be cleaned off. But uh, let's see if we can find a bit that looks promising. Put isopropyl alcohol on here. Well, that may have a cleaning effect, but I don't have a way of replenishing the pad really. I'd have to just keep changing them every so often. And considering how clean it needs to be, as we saw earlier, even a small amount of contamination will cause the heads to clog. Is there any chance of cleaning a tape up enough like this? Superficially, the tape on the output of this looks better than the tape going in, but it needs to be really clean to not foul the heads. And how could we automate this? I have my rig over here, which I've demonstrated in the past, which consists of a V2000 video recorder motor and some bits and bobs which I can attach tape reels to. But I don't have a way of securing mini DV hubs to that. It's ideal for half inch tapes and actually I can work it very well with video eight tapes, but there's no way of holding these hubs on that. So I can pull tape through from one spool to another just by sitting a, a spool on the top of that and just using friction, but I don't have a mechanism for holding a tape properly holding a, uh, a, a reel. I'd have to make something out of an old camcorder probably. Uh, you know, it's doable, but it would be very difficult. So let's just manually clean this small section of tape, load it back into the shell and see if we can play it. The result, well, yes, it's better than it was, but no, that won't be playable. I can tell that that will foul the heads instantly. OK, well, let's try that short section of tape that's been cleaned. OK, so let's try play a little bit of that tape. No, nothing. Well, I had a few moments of counter 
operation there in fast forward before it eventually hit a piece of tape so bad that it stopped the machine. Probably stalled the head. So the contamination is such that it's grabbing the head drum and stopping it from spinning properly. If I put the head cleaner through again, I should be able to go back to playing my reference tape fine. And the camcorder hopefully is working again. Yeah, it's working fine again. So, these tapes contaminate the heads in seconds, even when I've tried baking them and cleaning them with isopropyl alcohol on this rig. So the ideal solution would appear to be something like a tape check for uh, DV, but with some sort of um, rotating cleaning um, arrangement with pads that are being fed isopropyl alcohol in the same way as this drip feeder here was for the original uh, film cleaner. Um, by the way, this is similar contamination we've picked up from cleaning that tape. So there's a lot of uh, material coming off the tape. Now, exactly what that is, we don't know. That could be, you know, the magnetic material from the tape uh, where it's, it's shedding, or it could be the contamination of the uh, actual um, mould. But uh, whatever it is, that is getting onto the heads and fouling them up. So I think we have to come to the conclusion. There's no practical way to clean these tapes, these particular tapes, in the way that they require. But I really should emphasise this is extremely unusual. I've never seen tapes with this kind of problem before, where there's so much mould on the tape surface uh, that needs cleaning off. Uh, I've seen tapes similar to this on VHS and Beta and they can be cleaned using the tape check machines but even they only use a dry cleaning pad. We need something which continuously refreshes isopropyl alcohol onto clean pad to prevent it from streaking along its length and I don't believe any such machine exists. We're not looking for some ideas here about how to modify these rigs that we've got. Uh, yes, something could possibly be engineered if I spent about a month working on it. I could get the, the a scrap uh, mini DV camcorder to provide a way to hold the spools. And we could completely rig all this up so that it's possible to run it through the pads and then change the pads repeatedly. It would take a massive amount of work and still no guarantee of any success at all. So really we want to find if there's any kind of solution out there for cleaning tapes like this and I'm pretty certain no such machine exists. Well, I hope it's been an interesting exercise anyway. We've all learned something along the way and I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. Chicken, chicken.